Hi everyone, it's Deb here and I am, um, I've been asked to make a video on how to do the ribbon dolls and so I, um, I'm going to show you a few things. First, I chose my image and I'll show that to you and I got this off of Pinterest. It's a uh, German scrap, just an old fashioned, you know, Victorian style lady and you do not have to do this but I chose to reverse the image and do it double sided so I have fussy cut them both out and then I used my Zyron to uh, put adhesive on it and stuck just the top part together first and then fussy cut around again to make sure that it was all nice and neat and I've left the uh, adhesive backing in on the bottom part so that you know, and you can see it's I only did it on one side so that I can um, eventually take this off and insert the ribbons. So I gathered some different supplies and as you see this is uh, this is red and this is like more of a burgundy so but I've gathered some supplies and all different kinds of ribbons some of them are from Gone Artsy and some of them were gifted to me and um, I just gathered a variety of things so you'll see I've got a piece like this that was left over from one of the dress form kits that I worked on and this is from Gone Artsy it's just an, a crocheted ribbon uh, this is another Gone Artsy crocheted ribbon and um, they're all different lengths and I'll just use what I need this was a gift to me and it's kind of a yellowy color which is really good with the image I've got um, here's just some plain white in this one and I'm not sure which what I'll use. I may spray this butterscotch and, and use both or I may just use one. I'm not sure. This is a piece uh, from Gone Artsy that I had dyed previously. Um, this is just some seam binding from Gone Artsy and this was another piece that was gifted to me. It's similar to the yellow. It's exactly the same actually but in a more um, cream tone I guess I would call it. So I've got that and then this was a gift to me a long time ago before I opened my store and I just love this and I've hoarded it but I thought it would be pretty in this particular um, project so I pulled that out. Uh, this is a piece from Gone Artsy. I no longer carry it but it is a remnant piece so I've got that. Uh, this was a gift to me and it's a very beautiful cream soft lace and I've got two pieces of that. And then I have this eyelash and I, I thought I might incorporate that just for some texture and I'm not, not really sure yet but I did pull it out. And then like I said I have this red. So um, we're just going to start putting things together and spraying as we go and see how it goes. So I want to start out I think with, let me see, with this piece. This is what I imagined in the middle. And what I'm going to do is just fold it like this. And now obviously I will trim this at the end to be the length that I want. But I'm just now, you know, just going to start. So I thought that would be pretty as a center. And then perhaps now this one is an odd, it's got an odd cut piece here. So I'm going to trim that off. And never throw your scraps away because you can use them to make flowers later on. So I'm just going to cut out what I think I want here. Now obviously the little pieces, tiny pieces like this are just garbage, but a piece like this could be used in a flower. So I'll set that aside and now I'm going to go around to the other side and cut this out. Now that's a little leaf so I might save that piece. I don't know. I'll decide later. Okay, so now I've got a piece that looks like that. And there's a few little ends here that I don't want on from the way it was cut last time. I'm just going to trim those off. That one's being stubborn. 
go. Okay, that's it. That looks pretty good and pretty even. So now I'm going to look at the you, you, this one particular one has a right side and a wrong side. And so I want to make sure that the right side is facing forward and I'm going to put that on the center there. So that's how I'm going to start putting my ribbons in. And I'll move this up so you can see a little better. There we go. And then I can move them and adjust them, you know, to the to the way I want. And I may I may flip this and go the opposite direction. Let's see how that looks. And as you see, I'm just folding it to gather it a little bit in the center so it gives me that, that nice line in the middle. And, and yeah, actually, I think I like that direction better. So that's how I'm going to proceed. So let me set this aside. And I want to get an approximate length. So I think it's probably going to be about here. So I probably need to move my fold there. Let's see if that's long enough now. And you want to make sure that you have plenty, you know, to tuck in. So, and uh, yeah, because you don't want her dress too long. And there's a lot of this particular bodice. Now I did do another one, and I'll show you that that has a shorter bodice, and um, then you would want a longer skirt. But with this one, because of the way the skirt is, and I wanted to include that so I wouldn't lose the feather um, boa, uh, I decided to go just a little bit shorter. So I'm going to move that just one. I want it just slightly longer. So I'm going to move it one and it'll be like that. Okay. Now you could do several things. You could hot glue, you could um, sew it and you have lots of options. But the first thing that I need to do is determine where I need to cut this. And so that would be right here. So I'm going to cut that right here. I'm just cutting in between and now I have another little scrap and you know that can be used on something else so I'm just going to set that aside and I'm going to get this back to where it was make sure that that's similar in length yep okay and like I said you could either sew it hot glue it um, use regular glue whatever you want in this particular case for the uh, sake of the video I'm going to hot glue but I need it to heat up. So, <coughs> in the meantime, I'm going to lay out my other pieces. So this will be on top here, like that, and that'll give the dress, uh, you know, a little bit longer length too. And I'll pull that up so you can see. So that'll be the base of my of my ribbons. All right. So. I also want to include some of the more, um, oh, I guess I'd call it lighter lace, so it's not as heavy as these. So I'm going to include this one. And they don't, they don't all have to be the same length. You can have all different lengths, um, and they don't have to be, you know, like this all the time. So what I'm going to do is fold this in half, and I'm going to cut it. Okay, and set that aside. Now this is just a single piece, but I don't want these dots on it. I just want the braided part, so I'm going to cut that out. And again, I'm going to save these dots because I can use them on something else. Okay, almost done here. Okay, and I'm going to set those aside. And so now I've got a piece that looks like that, and I'll incorporate that somewhere. And um, I've got some different crocheted laces. So that one is uh, a little bit shorter than some of the others. So I'm going to cut that in half too because I want different lengths so it kind of looks fringy. 
Okay, just cutting that in half. Um, I think I'm going to stick with this kind of brownish color and use this on something else. I'm going to set that aside. Now, this is the one that I absolutely love that I've been hoarding. And so I'm going to cut a couple of pieces of that, and I want it similar in length to this. So I'm going to cut it there. And then I can use that piece to measure for a second piece. And boy, is it tangled. It's been in my stash for a while. Okay, so there's my, about that length. So I'll go in there and cut that. So now I've got two pieces of that one. And I really, really like this, but it's way too wide. So what I want to do is fold it in probably in thirds and cut it apart. So it'll be a little bit different on each piece. And so I'm going to fold it in the thirds. And then I'm going to lay it on here and kind of figure out how long I want it. So, and I'm not sure yet, so I'm going to cut it as long as this other piece. And I may, you know, I may do more than one of these. I don't know yet. So I'll set that aside. And now I can go in and actually cut this into thirds. So I'm just going to move this out of the way so I can move this up and you can see better. So I've got my piece cut and now I'm just going to fold it in the third approximately. It's not going to be exact. Okay. And I'm going to just cut up the side. And I'll even it out if it's not even after it's cut. The goal right now is just to get it cut. Okay, and so there you can see, and it's actually, it's not too bad. There's a little couple places I want to trim up. And now I'm going to take this and fold it in half. And cut it once again. I want to make sure that I get it in half. Okay, so I've got that like that, and I'm going to start cutting it. And I'll adjust as I go to make sure that I stay in that half range. Okay, and now I'm just going to lay them out and look at the edges and make sure that there's nothing that's really off. And um, I see a couple of places, like right here, there's a little, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little fringy that doesn't look right. So I'm just going to take my scissors and trim that up. Okay. And there's another one down here that looks a little wiggly. So trim that up too. Okay tiny one right there. Okay, and that looks pretty good now. So I'm going to set that aside. There's one piece done. And I'm just going to repeat that process. Just looking for any odd bits that look frayed or, you know, not nice and neat, in other words. Okay, and the last one. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now I've got that. And um, the more I think about it, the more I think I want a second piece because uh, then it'll, you know, have these same patterns on it. So I'm going to go ahead and take another one and cut it the same length. So let me get that on there. So it looks like I got to cut right here. Ok, 
Okay, and now I can set that piece aside as well. Okay, and I'm just going to repeat that process and I'm going to fast forward through some of these things so that you're not just sitting there watching me cut. But there I'm starting again in the thirds. Now, mind you, you can have as much or as little as you want. So I would rather have um, a lot to choose from and then take away later as I'm going. Oh, there's another piece of that same lace. So I'm going to set that aside. Um, now, this one is a, another crocheted lace. And I think that I'm going to have the crocheted laces be as long as these pieces so that they will give me the bulk that I'm looking for. So I need that about there. So I'm going to cut two pieces of this. So I'm going to cut it in half and then use the other end to measure the long piece. So there we go. And cut that off. Okay, so I've got those two pieces cut and I can set this aside. All right, now I definitely want to include some seam binding. I think seam binding adds, especially when it's crinkled like this, adds a um, a lot of texture to it. So I'm probably going to use several pieces of this. So again, I'm going to measure and I'm going to use it loosely from um, the longest point. So right there. It's a little tangled from when I crinkled it. Now if you've never crinkled seam binding before it's really simple. You just get it wet either with a, um, a spray bottle, run it underwater, you know if you're using misters because you want to change the color, um, whatever you want to do. But you, you just need to get it damp and then you just scrunch it up, lay it on your table and use your heat gun to dry it. It's very simple. Okay so I'm going to use this piece and measure. And like I said, we can always cut off later what, you know, if we decide it's too long or we don't like it, you can always cut off the amount. So there's one. And there's the second one. Oop, didn't get that cut all the way through. There we go. Okay, so there's four pieces of that. Now I'm going to keep this handy because I may... I may add more or I may add a different color, I don't know. Okay, and this fiber, I really like this fiber and I think that it will add some texture to it, but it's it's um, too thick, so I don't, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to cut some and we'll see how I like it after it's on there. And that's the key to this, guys, is just play. It's, there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's just play. Okay, so shake that out because all these loose pieces always come off when you cut it. Okay. All right, so my hot glue gun should be hot enough now. So I'm going to go ahead and start assembling. So I've got this piece laid out how I want it. And I'm going to go ahead and put some hot glue in there. Oh, hmm. it's not hot. It's very possible. There we go. Yep. The outlet was turned off. I have one of those that has the, oh, what do you call it? Um, the buttons that you push to turn it on and off. So the next thing I want to do, I know I want to add some of this in because it's it needs some red in there to go with, uh, where did it go? Where did it go? Here it is. Okay, it's, it's got some red, reddish color, and it's more of a brick or burgundy color, but um, we can alter this. So I'm going to take this fiber, and I know I'm going to want probably three or four pieces of it. So again, I'm going to measure against the length of this, and we can always cut off. So there we go. Okay. 
Okay, so there's one, and I'm going to open that up, and then I'm going to cut them in half later. And this is just, um, I, I got this at uh, Michael's. It's Craftsmart. It's ribbon. Um, it doesn't have a name. It's 100% acetate, and it's just like a mesh. As you can see, it's just a mesh. But again, it's a, the color, you know, I'm looking for color and also texture. So I'm going to measure that. And there's a second one. Okay. I can set that aside for now. And now I am going to cut this in half widthways. Or I should say, yeah, widthways. And then I'm also going to fold it in half lengthways. And this does crease a little bit, so I should be able to get it and cut it again. Okay. And so I'm going to go in here and cut the lengthways as well. that back together. And don't worry if they're not exact and they're not perfect. That is absolutely okay. Okay. And there's my four pieces now. So now I've got different, I've got it, it's a little bit thinner. It's not as wide and bulky. Okay. Now I'm going to set that over here because I'm going to show you what I plan to do with that. I'm going to repeat the process. Okay, and if you're more comfortable just cutting, you know, one at a time, you can do that too. For me, it's about just getting it done and it's not a very thick um, medium, so I can cut through them both fairly easily. there I've got my four pieces again. Okay, four pieces. <coughs> okay, let's see how this is doing. Not quite. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside then while we're waiting for that to heat up and I'm going to get this out of the way. And one of the things that I'm going to do is uh, darken these. So they're not quite as bright of a red. I'm looking for more of that um, burgundy brick color, I guess I would call it. So I'm just going to lay them on here and they can just be in a pile. They don't have to have to be um, individual, but I don't want them to be tangled either. So I'm going to lay them like that. And then I'm going to take this color wash by Ranger. It's Adirondack. Um, it's Tim Holtz and it's called Butterscotch. And I'm going to shake that up just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and spray that on here because I'm just wanting to darken that color a bit. Now, you want to make sure that, I mean, most people spray in a box or something like that, but for the sake of the video, I am spraying right here where you can see it, but I would recommend that you use a box or something. Okay, and I don't know if you can see now, you hold this red against it, the difference in color, this is a much brighter and this has darkened up, okay? And um, I would not recommend using a heat gun on this because it is the uh, acetate. So it would probably melt and shrink up and I don't really want that. So I'm going to get a piece of paper here. And this is just, let's, I just need a piece of scrap paper. Let me grab one. Okay, and I'm just going to lift them up, and lay them on here to dry out, okay? Now, a lot of that spray got on my paper, as you can see, so I, um, I'm going to just kind of be careful and lay it just on the edge of the mat, then I'm going to wipe up this mess. Okay. Now, when you clean something like this, you can use scrap paper and lay it on here and um, 
make a cool background or you can actually use the baby wipe and I'm just going to show you real quick on the edge of this paper and just you know use it to create a background so don't just dismiss your garbage okay but for this sake of this video I'm just going to get rid of it because I'm not going to be using it in the project At least not that I know of at this moment. I wouldn't need it. Get these back on here again. Let's put on that. Okay, and I'll do a better job of cleaning it later. I'm right now I'm just trying to get the majority of it up. And uh, so I've used a baby wipe. And they don't have I ran out of paper towels and didn't realize it, so I'm just going to use my Kleenex here and wipe down the last little bit. Get that up. Okay, so now I can set that there and let it dry. And I can go back over here and see how my glue gun is doing. Okay, it feels like it's hot now, so. I'm going to take my first piece that I, I told you I wanted to be kind of the center. And I'm going to just glue that together. Okay, and I'm not a huge fan of glue guns. Um, you'll see that in other videos, but you know, there are cases like doing a video where you need it to dry quick and so that's what you use. All right, so that's in place and the front and back will not be exactly the same so I had to choose one side of my image to be front and one to be back and on this particular one I wanted her head to tilt to the right so this will be the front and this will be the back. Okay, but you want it to look good from both directions too so all right so now I'm just gonna run this across the top to hold it on Okay. And yes, if you touch the glue, it is hot. You might burn your fingers, so be careful. They do make tools for that. I don't have them because I don't use glue guns often enough. Okay, so there's my start. And now it's just a matter of building layers. So I'm going to take, let's see, what do I want here? I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it back here I think off to the side just a bit so it'll show and I'm just you know I'm not doing anything but the top and I'm just layering so I've got that on maybe a piece of this yeah I think I want to color that so I'm gonna set that aside and let's see let's go with this next I like that, so I'm going to lay that in there. And maybe some of this yellow in the back. Yeah, I think I like that, like that. So I'm going to put that on the bottom and put that across there. Like that. And you just continue building layers. So that's what we have so far. I'll bring it up so you can see it. That's what we have so far. And you can adjust your pieces and, you know. But the, the key is when it hangs, it's going to be, you know, all different. And like that. But I'm just going to keep building layers.
this piece on. It's the opposite side, so it's kind of the same. Okay. Since I'm building on the back now, I want to make sure that I have that. And now I'm going to put this textured stuff right in the center of this whole thing. Okay, and with the hanging it will give it that, that texture from the front. You'll see some of that. And I'm not loving that. Not loving that. So what I may do is let me take it back off. And if you do it quickly, you can get it right off. And instead of doing that, I'm going to cut it in half. I think I'm going to add it further out to the side. So let's do it like that. back here, I think I'm going to go ahead and attach these, because you do want it to be pretty in the back, even if it's not identical, although you could make it identical, you could take two pieces the same, um, but I just only happen to have one of the brown ones, so this one will be slightly different, but it'll be full and pretty. Now I'm going to add, I think I'm going to put this one as the center on the back. Okay, I'm going to add in some more seam binding back here. that and I'm going to go back and get those dots because they're kind of pretty and I'm going to put that right over the top of that other one but first I want to put a piece of this right down the center and that way it um, gives it the, the contrast so you'll see that one underneath but it will be contrasted slightly and it won't just make the spots blend in. So there we go. So that's kind of what the back looks like. Okay, so I'm going to go back over to the front here. And it's getting nice and full now as you see. So I can keep adding or I can stop, but I want to keep adding. So um, I'm going to get some of these red pieces now and add those in. And I think I want that here. So I'm going to go in and remember this top is going to get tucked between the two images and again you do not have to have a second image I just chose to and if you don't do that then you just want to make sure your back is nice and, and neat you know and, and this right now is pretty neat I would maybe just put a piece of trim across the back or something so I want to get some of these red pieces in here and they're not going to be in exactly the same spots. I'm just randomly putting them in. Again, this is for the color. Okay, so I've got a couple of those in. I think I'm going to put one right behind this brown piece. Okay, and so now we've got a little bit of color added in there. Okay, I'm going to turn it over and stick some on the other side too. So let's see, let's go in here, I think. Stick that in there. And I think I'll go right here. 
and I wasn't sure how many I needed and so far I have used five and I think I'm going to stop at that with the red because I don't want to overwhelm it either because her dress is yellow. Okay, so now that's looking pretty good but I think it needs a piece of red right here. I'm going to go ahead and add a red. So now I'm, that's number six. And where did my glue go? There it is. Okay, and it's more in the towards the front now. Okay, and now um, I still want to add some of the crochet in the front here. So I'm going to go ahead again and use my butterscotch spray because it's kind of that yellowy. And I'm just going to get real close so I don't make as big a mess. And now you just scrunch it and roll it and get that color in there. You can add water, um, however you want to do it to get your color. Okay. And it's kind of a little dark for me, so I'm going to go ahead and add some water. Well, that is if I can get my spray bottle to work. Maybe I'll just pour it. I'm just going to add some water. Okay. And again, I'm just going to scrunch it around in there and get that color mixed up good. And it doesn't have to be an even color because, again, you know, you're working with vintage and you want it to look kind of old. So I've got that piece, and I'm just going to take this piece and lay it right on top, kind of squish it in, and get as much of the color as I can. So there we go. As you see, it takes very little of that spray, and you can you can uh, get lots of color. So there we have, and it's not exactly the same colors, but that's okay. I'm all right with that. So let me get a baby wipe here and wipe my hands. Oops. Let me wipe off my mess here again. And let me find my heat gun. There it is. And now I'm just going to go ahead and dry it. Okay, now because this was a heavy cotton, it did take a little longer to dry than I anticipated, but um, and I used water besides. So keep that in mind when you're dyeing your laces that you know the if you add water, it's going to take longer. Or your type of lace makes a difference. So now I'm just going to tuck these in. I don't want them to be predominant, but I want them to tuck in near the reds. I think so, and that's a little long. So I think I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to cut those in half. And tuck that in right there. So it'll lay over that. Okay, and that kind of brings that yellow from her dress in. Do the same thing on this side. I'm going to tuck this in right underneath this. Okay, and there we've got the front of the dress pretty well finished. Just, you know, although I think I'm going to add in some more of this, but okay, turn this over and add some yellow on the other side. I'm going to it in half again and I'm going to add that okay. 
there are these other crocheted pieces kind of on top there like that Okay, and there you see that's kind of what the back looks like. Now I want to add in some more of this lighter lace just because I think it needs some lightness. So I'm going to add a piece of this back here, back behind this first one, and off to the side a little bit. And it's all in, you know, it's all your taste. You just keep layering and layering until you're happy with it. And, and I, I just felt like that needed that. So I'm going to put that on there. And I'm going to put this one on this side with has a little wider. There we go. A little wider edge to it. And then pull this back down over. And I think that because I did that, I lost some of the red. So I'm going to take these last two strips and put those underneath here too, right about there. I like that much better. Okay. And so now that's our, whoops, that's our back and it kind of is nice and full and has some movement to it. Okay. And so now, and the front looks like this. And I didn't get a second piece of this in, so I'm going to do that because I like how that looks. So I'm going to go on this side. And I think it needs that other piece of seam binding too that I didn't get on there. So we're going to go first the seam binding. Oops. Okay, and then where did it go? Here it is. This piece. over. There we go. Okay. So we've got all the colors and I want a little more softness so I'm going to bring this in here as well. I've got that on that side so I'm going to add, let's see where is that? It's right underneath these. So I'm going to add this one right here. Oops, wrong way. There we go just needs that softer looking lace in my opinion. So stick that down in there and pull these down and over that red piece that was in the center which these are tangling because they tend to do that and plus I got glue strings everywhere and I'm just going to put this little piece right over that. So it will, let's get the sleeve down. So it'll be right behind that flower. There we go. Okay, and I think that I am really happy with that. I think that that's nice and full and beautiful. And so now it's just a matter of attaching it to our doll. So get that out of the way. So it is nice and thick and full, <clears throat> and I may end up trimming it down some. But let's go ahead and attach it. Now, the front part, like I said, has no adhesive, but the back part does. So what I want to do is hold this up 
and remove that adhesive and then put this right in the center and then bring that, push that down onto that adhesive that's already there. And so now that's what we have, okay? All right, and so now I'm just going to glue this to this. So I'm just going around the edge and in this case I'm going to use um, a liquid glue because I believe it will hold better on all this lace with the paper and because I don't love hot glue. So, okay, so I just pushed that all over and now I'm just going to put that down and I'm going to weight it so that it will, it will dry nice and flat and then we can deal with it from there. Now, after this is dried, I will come back and we'll talk about the length and if we think it should be, re, you know, shortened or what we want to do with it. And then also we'll talk about embellishing the top. You don't have to do that, but um, you could add stickles, you could add some little flowers, pearls, you know, different things just to brighten up that actual image. So I will be back as soon as this is dry. All right, so it's completely dry and um, I just wanted to show you I made a few changes. I added, um, I wasn't loving how that brown, uh, it was just a little too pale. So I went ahead and added a little red pepper and I just used my finger and rubbed it on and then add a little, a little water from my finger too um, to give this that kind of burgundy color that's in, that's here and in her hat. And then I tipped it a little bit here on the edges too with that red just to bring that in some. And then I also added some peach uh, sheer ribbon just for softness because I thought it needed a little more softness. And this is what we have. So that's the front and this is the back. It's, you know, a little bit different, but they can put it whichever direction they like. Um, I personally like the front best, but if she likes this side better, then she could hang it from this. And this will go to my swap partner in the Chic Craftique um, uh, ribbon doll swap. So I've made that one and it's pretty simple. And then all you have to do is go in and embellish however you want. Like I said, you could leave it plain. You will need a way to hang it. So you'll have to put something on the top here to hang it from. Um, I intend to, you know, embellish a little bit here and here and maybe add some, um, some little pearls or maybe some twinkling H2Os. I'm not really sure yet. But one thing I did want to show you is um, around the edges, you could see the white from the paper where I cut it. And so I took the uh, baby wipe that I had used to wipe up earlier and I just went and went around and tipped it like this completely around. And that just gave it that blending that you need. Um, and I think it turned out really nicely. So I'm really happy with it. And that was an easy way to use your wipe so you're not wasting your spray. And at the same time, um, bringing in that blend. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative on how to make these. And um, when it's completely finished, after I've added my embellishments, I will take a picture and add it to the end of the video. So please stay tuned. And thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.